Thank you for joining us today for 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Krista Galbraith, who's completing her Master's in Architecture at North Dakota State University. We invited her here today to speak about her research, as well as the completion of artifacts in preparation for her defense. Stitching of Story is a thoughtful, almost orchestral installation that weaves fragments of a place into a more unified story. Krista's work speaks to individuality and culture. It takes scenes from the past that we can interact with in a contemporary setting. There's a duality that can only exist in the made world where we must reconcile who we are in a place that we just stepped into. I'm Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. Krista, thank you so very much for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. So your work speaks to the struggle for identity in an ever-changing world. And I was wondering, is Harlem a uh, um, sort of a reference to like a microcosm going on across the the world or is Harlem a very specific instance that is sort of unique? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's kind of both in a sense. Uh, Harlem is definitely a place where story and this um, discovery of ident identity has really been celebrated and searched for but I think that it's kind of uh, an issue for all communities um, so I think every community has their own story their own identity and their own way of showcasing it so when um, your uh, your site is it in Minneapolis or is it in Harlem uh, my project sites in Harlem yep so it's in West Harlem um, kind of this area between um, kind of that traditional downtown Harlem and um, upper Manhattan where Columbia University is starting to creep into kind of their neighborhood. Um, so it's right in that kind of merging of the two. Okay. Can you tell me um, um, some sort of like connection of uh, uh, fragmentation or loss that maybe occurred in some place other than Harlem? Mm, um, and how we can sort of like make a connection? I think that's a hard question for me to answer just because I think there is fragmentation in all cities, um, especially when you're dealing with kind of like the loss of history. Um, but I think particularly the issue with Harlem is this uh, kind of creeping in of gentrification and that's really what's starting to take over um, that area. And I don't know that that is necessarily um, on as big of a scale anywhere else. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, when I'm experiencing your work, I'm, uh, I almost feel like a giant who's sort of like walking through a city. And uh, I was wondering how scale plays a role in uh, not only maybe your artifact, but also maybe your architecture. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think specifically in my artifact, scale was uh, the scale of the screens is really kind of dictated by um, the room itself. So I wanted the projectors to be able to span across the floor, um, go up the screen, the dancing characters or the, the little screens and hit the wall behind it. Um, so it's really engaging um, the entire space. And so that's kind of the, the reasoning for the scale uh, within those um, like floating pieces of paper. So as people are walking through it, uh, you are kind of getting like a bird's eye view of, you know, maybe like a cityscape or something like that. But as you kind of sit down, you're able to see it from another perspective. And I think that informs the way that I want my architecture to feel is that when you're walking through um, th these renovated buildings that I am adding to, that you're getting pieces of the building, um, you're seeing kind of a large scale of it, but when you kind of slow down and look at the details, then you're getting another perspective. Yeah. Um, you're doing renovations on a, uh, an established building. How much does the history of the building actually affect the way that you're uh, designing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the, the age and the history of the building uh, is really integral to the story that I'm trying to preserve. So. Um, within the story of the community and their identity, I think it's really um, obvious kind of in the layers of inhabitation that are present in those buildings. So the, the buildings that I'm working with were designed in 1912. They have that really classic style, um, but then th there's, um, they also have that patina of the kind of the crumbling paint. They have the more modern layers of graffiti and um, people kind of uh, exploring the buildings in a more recent history. And so it's kind of, um, 
I'm attempting to embody all of those uh, aspects of the building and preserve them um, to kind of tell the story of the building through time. Um, there's something kind of uh, obscure about the future. And there's also something uh, that is um, that you can't necessarily capture from the past. You know, like you can mm -hmm. attempt, you know. Um, I was wondering if there's any sort of element of unpredictability in, um, uh, that fits into a work like stitching a story. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's some of that unpredictability in my artifact in the way that it's responding to um, the air currents in the in the room. Um, so it's kind of a choreographed chaos, but it is sort of unpredictable and chaotic. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking through it, you might get caught in some pieces, uh, things like that. And I think that's true of architecture too. You can't always dictate where people are going to go or how they're going to use a space. So I think some of that unpredictability um, is what makes spaces really special and beautiful. Yeah. Well, um, I, I've seen children come into the gallery and uh, they just sit and stare uh, and wonder at, uh, at your piece. And uh, there's a lot going on, but it's also very hypnotic and um, it's sort of magical in a way. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if wonder fits into, uh, wonder or joy fits into the way that you're sort of approaching your architecture. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, any building that you're going into, especially one that's um, so uh, such a staple of the community and is telling kind of the story of the place um, should uh, stir up a lot of emotions in people, maybe not all joy, but I think um, joy and kind of belonging in that space is something that can um, be achieved through telling a story in architecture. And uh, I think in my artifact, it is kind of mesmerizing the, the dancing pieces. Um, and I think some of that mesmerization helps people kind of zero in onto the, the particular story being depicted. Yeah. At the end of our uh, discussion, we like to ask a few questions about your creative practice. So I was curious what time of day you feel like you're most creative? Mm. Um, I would definitely say in the evenings. Uh, I, like most architecture students, I'm kind of a night owl, so evenings and early morning. Okay. Mm. Do you listen to any sort of music or anything like that when you're creating? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a big R&B fan, so I try and listen to things that are kind of calming and soothing yeah. to kind of offset the, the chaos of school. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you're reading right now? Um, right now I'm reading House of Leaves by Mark Danieluski. Okay. Um, it's a book that works in a really similar way to my uh, architecture and my artifact. Um, so it's a narrative that's told kind of in fragments and it's jumbled together. So it's been interesting to see it from a, a different medium. Okay. Um, and what do you think the most challenging thing is about working in your medium? Um, in architecture? Mm -hmm. or I think the most challenging thing is kind of marrying that function and the, um, I guess, the poetic side and the the fragmented montage that I'm trying to instill um, because it's fairly easy to, to do something that's fragmented, but to still make it function well and have people understand it is uh, probably the biggest challenge. Okay. Um, how do you know when you are finished? It's a great question. Um, you know, I don't know that work is ever totally finished. Uh, I think that's one of the great things about it is it continues to kind of like live and breathe as people experience it and add their own um, thoughts to it and their own experience. So um, I guess I'd say they're never finished. Okay. Um, and then I guess my last question would be, uh, what's next? Um, that's a good question too. Uh, I am not sure what's next after school. Right now it's just finishing the project and then we'll see where I end up. But, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for joining us today, Krista, on 10 Minutes with the Artist. Um, and I'd also like to thank you all for uh, joining us uh, to discuss uh, creative practice and professional practice here at North Dakota State University. So for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative. Mm -hmm.